December 29th. Night turns to fire as Mount Etna unleashes lava fountains reaching 400 meters and surging ash. Alert levels were raised over recent days, and a yellow alert has become a red aviation warning, just as it did before Etna's crippling 2001 eruption that shut down airports for weeks. Are we witnessing the start of another disaster, or is this major eruption about to change course? The next minutes will reveal what is at stake. From December 24th, the pace of change on Mount Etna stunned even seasoned observers. What began as scattered, short-lived Strombolian bursts at the summit quickly intensified, drawing the attention of locals, tourists, and scientists alike. On the upper flank of the Voragine crater, a new vent cracked open, sending short-lived lava fountains up to 200 meters into the chilly Sicilian air. By early morning on December 27th, volcanic tremor readings spiked sharply, a clear sign that something deeper was shifting beneath the surface. That same morning, just after sunrise, the northeast crater erupted with force. Lava fountains soared between 150 and 200 meters, while a thick ash column rose high enough to reach flight level 380, about 12 kilometers above sea level. The sky turned gray as ash drifted west-southwest, and aviation authorities issued a red warning for planes in the region. Skiers on the slopes near Piano Provenzana watched as the snow glowed orange under the early light, the eruptions lighting up the mountain like a beacon. By early afternoon, the activity surged again. At 2.15 in the afternoon, the northeast crater unleashed a new round of paroxysms, this time with lava jets reaching 300 to 400 meters. The ash plume thickened, and explosions sent pyroclastic material tumbling down the slopes. Tremor readings climbed to their highest values in days, signaling a level of energy rarely seen outside of Etna's most memorable episodes. Residents in nearby towns like Zafirana Etnea and Nicolosi reported hearing distant rumbles and feeling windows tremble, though no ashfall reached inhabited areas. Tourists gathered at safe vantage points, phones raised, capturing the rare sight of a volcano in full fury. As darkness fell, the spectacle continued. Explosions at the northeast crater and the new Voragine vent sent glowing fragments skyward. A continuous lava fountain at the Voragine vent fed a fast-moving flow which advanced 1.8 kilometers east into the uninhabited Valle del Bove. The night glow, visible for miles, painted the snow-covered summit in shades of red and gold. Even in the quiet hours, tremor remained high, and the mountain's restless energy was impossible to ignore. For those living nearby, the question lingered, how much further could this escalation go? In July 2001, Mount Etna's southern flank split open with little warning. Within hours, lava surged from new fissures, flooding down toward the busy tourist hub of Rifugio Sapienza. The eruption's intensity did not fade after a single night. Instead, the mountain kept pouring out lava for over three weeks, reshaping the landscape and disrupting daily life across eastern Sicily. As the days stretched on, the scale of the disaster became clear. Catania Fontana Rosa Airport, the region's main gateway, was forced to close for 34 days. Ash blanketed the runways, reaching up to 10 centimeters thick in places. More than 4,000 flights were canceled or diverted, stranding travelers and cutting off a vital economic lifeline at the height of the summer season. The closure rippled through the local economy with hotels and resorts along the coast reporting a 50% drop in visitors. For many, the summer of 2001 was defined by empty beaches and shuttered shops. Lava flows did not spare the mountain's own communities. As the eruption advanced, homes and farmland near Milo and Piano Provenzana faced direct threat. Over 1,000 residents were evacuated as a precaution. Cable cars and ski lifts were buried or destroyed, wiping out infrastructure that had taken years to build. Chestnut orchards and vineyards, some tended for generations, were lost beneath the advancing rock. Emergency crews worked around the clock, building diversion barriers in late July to slow the flows and protect the villages. Those efforts paid off, stopping the lava just one kilometer short of Milo. The economic toll mounted quickly. Italian Civil Protection and European Union reports estimated total losses between 350 million and 500 million euros. Recovery took months, with European Union aid helping to rebuild what was lost. Even after the eruption slowed in August, the scars on the land and the strain on the community lingered. The eruption of 2001 left a lasting memory, 
a reminder that Etna's power can disrupt not just the mountain, but the entire region's way of life. For scientists and residents today, the question is whether the current escalation might follow a similar path, or if the story will end differently this time. Inside the Etna monitoring room, the tension is measured in numbers. Every tremor, every uptick in seismic energy, tells its own story. On December 27th, just before dawn, the instruments at the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, called INGVI, registered a sudden spike, volcanic tremor. Amplitude, a key indicator of underground magma movement, shot up to its highest level in days. At 0045 local time, a magnitude 2.4, earthquake struck 32 kilometers below the surface, deep enough to suggest magma was forcing its way upward, not just a surface crack. INGV volcanologists watched as the data shifted from normal background noise to a pattern they know all too well, a sharp rise in tremor followed by explosive surface activity. One INGV scientist described it simply, this is not just gas escaping, it is a rapid push from below. The tremor source centered near the northeast crater, matching the location of the most intense lava fountains. For the scientists, these signals are more than just lines on a screen. They are the early warnings, the evidence that allows them to anticipate what the mountain might do next. When the numbers move this fast, the response has to be just as quick. When the ash column from Mount Etna surged to flight level 380, nearly 12 kilometers above sea level, aviation authorities issued a red code. This is the highest alert for air travel, triggered when ash reaches the cruising altitude of most passenger jets. The warning is not about panic on the ground. It is a direct signal to pilots and airlines, avoid the plume, reroute if necessary, and stay clear of the hazard zone. Modern systems, including real-time satellite feeds and INGV 24-hour seismic monitoring, allow officials to track changes minute by minute. Civil protection agencies remain in close contact with local leaders, ready to act if the situation changes. As of now, there have been no reported injuries, no evacuations, and no damage to homes or infrastructure. The lava flows continue to move through uninhabited valleys, and the main concern is keeping the skies safe. For residents and tourists, daily life continues with caution, not fear. The red code is a reminder that even with advanced technology, nature's pace can still outstrip prediction. The next 48 hours stand as a crossroads for Mount Etna. Scientists at INGV are watching for three possible outcomes, each carrying its own weight. First, stabilization. A sudden drop in volcanic tremor, with lava fountains shrinking back to smaller rhythmic bursts. That would mean the mountain settles into a quieter phase, as it has after some past surges. Second, intensification. Tremor stays high or climbs further, fueling more powerful fountains, longer-lasting lava flows, and thicker ash columns. If that happens, the risk of new hazards like ash drifting over towns or lava finding a new downhill path rises sharply. Third, new vents. The mountain has already shown it can crack open fresh fissures, and another vent could change the direction or speed of lava catching even experienced observers off guard. INGV instruments are tuned to every shift, but the signals remain ambiguous. The next day or two will be critical. No one can say which path Etna will take, and that uncertainty keeps everyone on alert. Right now, Mount Etna's fate remains unwritten. Its activity is tracked in real time by satellites and scientists worldwide. With over 900,000 people living in its shadow, Every tremor is a reminder. Nature's timeline is not ours to predict. The next chapter is already forming. Stay alert. Stay curious.